Julia Chester Emery, September 24, 1852, Dorchester, Massachusetts, to January 9, 1922. Julia Chester Emery, or Miss Julia, as she was affectionately called, is the first Episcopal Saint icon that I've written. Now that I've had the chance to get to know her, I feel like she fits right in with my girls Hildegard von Bingen, Edith Stein, and feminist theologian Sally McFig. Miss Julia traveled around the world twice, carrying a suitcase full of savvy inspiration and call. She rode the first Union Pacific train after the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad. She influenced so many people and even gave up a substantial portion of her salary to keep others employed and make sure that the deaconesses and missionaries of her time were taken care of in their retirement. She fought for the canonical status of the deaconess program, leading the charge that deaconesses be treated equally as canonical standing deacons. She even turned down marriage in favor of serving the church and her position in the women's auxiliary. While not much is known about JCE's childhood, since she was a very private person, we do know that she was persistent and led many quiet rebellions. She even led her fellow high school students to leave their textbooks at home when their teacher wanted them to study Milton instead of Shakespeare. Julia was having none of that. Her classmates joined in and the teacher was subsequently forced to instruct on the bard. This tale seems to be a great metaphor for her life. I feel close to Julia Chester Emery in her travels, so the focus of this icon is on the places she's been and how she got there, from a ship captain's daughter to riding the first Union Pacific train. There are so few images of her, but a lot more than most saints that I'm used to, so I researched what she may have worn to travel in, considering where she went and her style. She was always writing journals and articles for the spirit of missions, so you'll see the ink and quill, something I'm particularly fond of since I'm a writer myself. She fought for women to have a voice in the church and the rights of deaconesses and missionaries, so you'll see her holding a woman's symbol. As a future deacon myself, I'm extremely grateful for her work. She traveled the globe twice, so I included the globe with two ribbons. The blue box is for her work and founding of United Thank Offering, an Episcopal shield for her work in the church a cross around her neck for her love of God, and even a book on Shakespeare, because I just love the story of defying her teacher in the name of doing what's right. And finally, you'll notice the travel stickers on her luggage. Alaska for the diocese started because of UTO funding, China where she traveled to the Yangtze River, London where she went to the Lambeth Conference, and New England where she's from. She traveled to many other places, but there's only so much room on one suitcase. People said she traveled well, likely attributed to her father being a ship captain, so I imagine she packed light. I like that JCE was quiet and didn't want the attention focused on her, but led people to do the right thing, traveling the world inspiring others along the way. Certainly a force to be reckoned with. I just wish I could sit in a Union Pacific train car across from her, sipping some Earl Grey, listening to her stories of fighting for the rights of women in the church, giving up a portion of her salary so others had enough in theirs, her two round-the-world trips, and especially how she bamboozled her way into meeting the royal family at the Lambeth Conference in London. I'm a big fan of Miss Julia, and I don't think people know enough about her. So I invite you to sit alongside Miss J and discuss how you can inspire others like she did how perhaps you can make life a little easier for those less fortunate than yourself, how you can quietly fight the patriarchy, and maybe how we can all learn the spiritual gift of packing light, not just our suitcases, but the baggage we carry around the world in our day-to-day lives. When Miss Julia quietly resigned by formal letter to the officers of the General Convention in 1921, she said, It is time for a new generation of women to lead this work. She believed that women can and should lead, that the future of our church and its ministries lies in the creativity, mentorship, support, energy, and voice of women of all generations. But she most especially believed in the new generation, that when given the chance to lead, can effectively turn the church towards a better and brighter future. 
She was an example of faith, grace, humility, and inspired leadership. I hope to see a lot more Julias in the church. Do you see any sitting next to you?